Let us begin our prayer today for Kathleen and for ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. In the waters of baptism, Kathleen died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with Christ eternal glory. Look with kindness on the soul of your servant Kathleen, who has now set down the burden of her years. As she remained faithful throughout her life, may you give her the fullness of your peace and joy. We give thanks for the life of Kathleen, now caught up in your eternal love, as we make our prayer in the name of Jesus, who is our risen Lord, now and forever. Amen. Let us be seated as we listen to our readings from the scriptures proclaimed for us by Suzanne, the first from the Old Testament. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they 
are in peace. For if before others indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in a furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let all men know your forbearance. The Lord is at hand. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is gracious, 
if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite you to please stand. Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. We come here today and our purpose is to not only say our goodbyes to Kathleen, but to pray them. Kathleen, who passed away from us just a month and a day shy of her 87th birthday. And while the measure of the fullest life in terms of years in this time may be trending toward that centenarian standard, still we know that Kathleen has not only lived a long life, but much more importantly, she lived a full life and a good life. Indeed, when we think about it, somewhere on this very day, and indeed on every day, there are those who will be using skills that Kathleen, the teacher, either imparted to them or help them to improve or to master. There are undoubtedly some whose entire life direction was set by Kathleen, their teacher's influence, and most especially her zeal for learning, her love of art and literature, her competence at mathematics. Then there are those who were privileged to learn the more important lessons of life from her, how to love, how to forgive, how to get along, how to be fair and play fair, how to cooperate and do your fair share. These are, of course, her most precious students, you, her sons, and then beyond you, her grandchildren. By Kathleen's example, perhaps more than her specific instructions. You were shown how to make a house a home and how to be at home, how to never stop learning and changing, 
how to always strive to fulfill your God-given potential in this life. Indeed, no one can deny that Kathleen, always the learner herself through her loves of books and study and travel, and always the teacher in so many ways, has certainly left her mark and will have a positive impact well beyond her lifespan. Yes, through her students in the classroom, but especially those in this circle of family who were privileged to be able to call her mother and grandmother. Kathleen will undoubtedly live on in you and through you, and all she has imparted to you by the wisdom of her words, and more importantly, the quality of her example. Yet as you come here today, having lived that challenging last chapter of life with Kathleen, you are in a position better than many to know how fragile is the human mind, how undependable in the long term is the human memory. So while we may take comfort that Kathleen will live on in some sense through those whose lives she has greatly impacted and now leaves behind, we should not accept that as either completely just or fully optimal if that is the only way that so bright, loving, and noble a person should live on beyond death. So that is why it is important that we come here this morning, come to this church to pray our goodbyes to Kathleen in the context of the Christian community's most ancient prayer of praise and thanksgiving, the prayer that we commonly call the Mass. For here we listen to the words of Scripture to console us, and we do what Jesus has asked us to do in his memory as we consecrate the bread and wine according to his own instruction. But as we do, we remember his life and death, but much more importantly, his resurrection from the dead. And with that, his promise of the same for all who, like Kathleen, will become a part of him through baptism and remain a part of him through faith and communion in him throughout their lives by the Eucharist, which he has left us for this very purpose. As Kathleen walked through her own passion, her time of decline as the consequence of a still rather mysterious condition, that can cloud even the sharpest of minds and erase memories. Kathleen certainly lost some precious things, especially her independence, but certainly not her faith, for that was at the very core of her being. And it seemed evident on that day that was her own Good Friday when the sacraments were last celebrated with her and for her, and as the Lord's Prayer was being recited, you could see her lips start to move in sync with it. Indeed, faithful right to the very end. The author of our first reading today reminds us that the souls of the just that is, those who strive to live their lives in right relationship with God and with other people are destined to live beyond this world and to live at peace in the hands of God. There, all that is praiseworthy, all that has been known to be of excellence, will, as St. Paul alludes in our second reading, be experienced forever in complete perfection. It will be a life in a dwelling place established by Jesus himself as a fitting home for all who, like Kathleen, 
approved by their faith, their hope, their love, that they truly do belong to Jesus Christ and are his disciples. So, so while grief at the loss of a mother, a grandmother, a sister, a relative, a friend, a colleague, is more than justified since the 26th of March, yet the gospel reminds us troubled hearts, though, are not necessary if we would but place our faith in Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. As this passage from the fourth gospel assures us, any who follow Jesus Christ can trust that he is leading them to that promised place in his Father's house, that home in his own home, where reunited with those gone before, all will know the joy of life in its fullness, a life lived forever without any disease or diminishment, forever in his company. So in sadness, yes, but with faith and trust, let us prayerfully commend the soul of Kathleen to that eternal dwelling place and go forward on our own paths of discipleship, always harboring the great hope that is ours through faith, that on one great, final, and endless Easter day, we will see Kathleen again, restored to the prime of her younger days, as together with her and all the faithful, we live in the light of Christ's risen glory forever. confidence now let us stand and turn to God who raised his son Jesus Christ from death to pray for Kathleen and ourselves as we respond Lord hear our prayer for Kathleen who became a part of Christ through baptism and whose life of faith hope and love bore much good fruit that she may now enjoy the fullness of life in God's eternal kingdom we pray to the Lord. For those who, like Kathleen, generously place their gifts and talents at the service of others and the wider community, that they may persevere in their efforts to make their corner of this world a better place, we pray to the Lord. For all who have been blessed to learn from Kathleen as teacher, that the lessons she taught them will continue to help them in their lives and enable them to better the lives of their families and communities, we pray to the Lord. For Kathleen's husband, Jack, and all deceased members of the McCartney, Mack, and Chapman families, and for all who have gone before us in faith, may they be given an everlasting home in the Father's house, we pray to the Lord. For all who accompanied Kathleen on the last mile of her life's journey, may all who attended and assisted her at Bridges be blessed in turn for their compassion and care, we pray to the Lord. For a cure for Alzheimer's, COVID-19, cancer, and all other presently incurable diseases, may those engaged in medical science and research be led to find the answers they seek. We pray to the Lord. For Kathleen's sons, their spouses, children and grandchildren, her siblings, relatives, colleagues, friends and former students, that gratitude at the blessings they have received through Kathleen will overshadow the sadness they now feel at her death. 
we pray to the Lord. And for those personal intentions that we pause to mention in silence, For all our needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, may you support us all the day long till shadows lengthen and evening falls and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, Lord, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at last. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. We invite you to be seated now as we prepare the altar to celebrate the Eucharist. Together pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that the soul of your departed servant Kathleen may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Edgar our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Kathleen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on this world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 With the longing for the coming of that kingdom where we hope to be reunited with all the faithful one day again. We pray as Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who on the day of your glorious resurrection appeared before your disciples, saying, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her 
peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Using a simple gesture, let us exchange with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Rise, 
praise the Father's great amen to all the hopes and dreams of every heart. Peace beyond all telling and freedom from all fear. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate for you. believe that we will see you when you come. In your glory, Lord, we remember, we celebrate, we Let us pray. Lord God, giver of all that is true and lovely and gracious, you created in marriage a sign of your covenant. And so we pray, look with kindness upon your servant Kathleen, who for 63 years was united in love with her husband Jack. You blessed them in their companionship, and in their joys and sorrows you bound them together. Reunite them now in your presence, lead them into eternal peace, and bring them to that table where all your saints feast together in your heavenly home. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. And we'd ask you to be seated as Brian comes forward to share with us some personal reflections about Kathleen. Thank you all for being here in this holy place on this special day. We gather in love and respect for Kathleen. Mom wished her funeral mass to be a celebration of her soul, life's work, 
and the hope that today would be the day her heavenly life would begin. So it's in that spirit, Mom, we honor you with these sincere reflections. Kathleen believed in the God-given soul. She told her four boys many times over the years that each was given a unique and precious soul with a set of God-given abilities and qualities. She said we will be held to account for those gifts. Kathleen's soul is with us today, and we can all attest, because we know her, that she has delivered mightily on her gifts. I'm fortunate to be selected to offer these reflections and blessed to be the second son of four boys receiving from mom more than my fair share of love, <clears throat> guidance, and friendship. I would like to say that whether Kathleen was your daughter, sister, mother, wife, aunt, grandmother, Nana, or Mrs. Chapman, the teacher, neighbor, or parishioner, any of these, you could be up here as easily as I and reflect on the wonderful person we know and love so much. Mom set the standards behave for behavior in our family. She told us, honor your father and your mother. She trained all our boys to stand up tall and shake hands firmly. She told us to behave and be ambassadors for everything we do reflects immediately on this family. Kathleen was raised Catholic and actively practiced the faith. She brought her husband, Jack, that she loved so much <clears throat> as he loved her to be a practicing Catholic and together they raised their boys in the faith. Catholic ritual was deeply ingrained in mom. If you ever had the chance to drive with her in a moving vehicle, you know that any snarl or mishap or panic caused the stamping of the feet in the passenger compartment, a loud reciting of the communion of saints, starting with Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And by the time you got to Agatha or Bartholomew, you knew you were in trouble. <laughs> life meant love for mom, and her love was active. Mom was the lifeblood of love in our home, always, re always there for her husband and her boys. She made our home life remarkably wonderful in so many ways, and we owe her a grat of gratitude. She brought her love to teaching, and thousands know her inspiration for learning, growing, and achievement. Her command of the children's attention was incredible, and she was inclusive of all. Once, she told me the challenge is to create a good test that everyone can pass. She read and sang to her children, inspired and cheered them on, and did it all over again with her prized grandchildren. Mom was loved by so many, especially for all her years of teaching in middle school. And I don't just say that, trust me, she was loved. When I was a high school senior, I was told more than once by smart and cute incoming freshmen who came up to me and said, I love your mother. Kathleen worked to grow her mind and exercise her body and encourage all of us to do the same. She read thousands of books of all kinds over her lifetime, taught herself to draw and paint, and even when she retired, when most people take a break, she referred to take her courses in art appreciation in college. Mom was found fond of jigsaw puzzles, whether at the puzzle table or in casual conversation. She was quick to recognize our unique contributions. She celebrated even the little successes, like connecting a group of puzzle pieces. Her compliments were genuine and made people feel good about themselves, especially the grandchildren. The puzzle pieces are now in place. There's no doubt that in heaven, our mom has found the lasting peace. <laughs> Kathleen was devoted to the community of faith. She prayed and she suffered for others and did so to her last breath. I remember being injured or broken heart or ill. Mom would support me with her time and care and conversation, but also reminded me that suffering you take on is for the good of others that they might be healed. Her suffering with Alzheimer's, she took with such strength and acceptance that she inspired devotion in all of us. There was no special social committee, book club, or, or board that mom would not participate in. Her interest in supporting and building community, engaging with others was just so strong. Our dad encouraged her always in her works, and he lifted her up high on his flagpole, and she was the flag. We love you, Mom. You, Kathleen, will be in our hearts and our hopes every day until we might, God willing, meet again, and we'll pick up where we left off. Thank you.
Let's all stand. We come now to that part of our funeral liturgy that is known as the commendation and farewell, the handing over and the saying goodbye. It's we not only as Kathleen's family, but as the baptized, the church on earth, acknowledge with certainty that Kathleen was certainly a member of the assembly of the faithful here on earth. And so it is our certain hope that she is now amongst the faithful assembled before for God's throne in his kingdom. And so it is with that spirit of hope that we make our final prayers that together we sing a song of farewell as we incense Kathleen's body as a gesture of offering and respect. Choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord enfold you in his mercy. May you find Into your hands, Father of mercies, we must now commend the soul of our sister Kathleen in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with Christ, body and soul, on the last day. We thank you for the many blessings that you gave Kathleen during her nearly 87 years of life. Let these be signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to the soul of your servant Kathleen and help all who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister Kathleen forever. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. In the sure hope of the resurrection, we take Kathleen to her resting place and go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Like a shepherd, I will feed you. I will guide. And we will 
God will be our strength and we by name.